Before we talk about Tim as the scientist and the man, I want to explain a little bit about what we think happened. I've known Tim for over two decades. This is the actual chase car, a Chevy Cobalt, that was being used that day. Photo coming in from one of Tim's fellow storm chasers, our own Tony Laubach. This is a view on the inside of that car, some of the instrumentation. And this is a view taken by Tony Laubach on the same storm. This is the tornado. And I want to show you not only a massive, very unstable situation. This was a mesocyclone or a big, intense storm that was very very changeable, going from a big wedge tornado to multi-vortex tornadoes. But look at the roads here. These are clay. When they get wet, they turn into just gumbo and become very hard to pass by. They've had heavy rain in the Oklahoma City area for days. We're talking 5 to 10 inches of rain. On Friday, the tornado area around El Reno had Tim's car positioned just to the south of Interstate 40, just to the east of US 81 out off of the main highway. Now, this is not a four-wheel drive car. The bigger vehicle that they're using for their lightning research was positioned farther to the northwest for later in the day. The expected path of the storm was like this, and this very unstable storm suddenly took a strong turn. And in talking to Tony Laubach, we think it's very likely that Tim's car may have had either car trouble or been stuck in the mud, and they just simply could not get out of there. Now, this is such a shock because Tim is the safest of any storm chaser there is. He's iconic in this business. This is Tim with one of the turtles, the probes that he's developed. He's a brilliant engineer. And Tim's idea is to always stay a safe distance away from the tornado, use those probes, which he'd place in front of the tornado to get video such as this. It's actually taken from the remote probe, a tornado a couple of years ago that went right over that particular instrument. He was the safest possible storm chaser, which makes this so hard to comprehend. Now, a couple of years ago, we spent four days together traveling about 2,000 miles doing what he loved and what he did best. Radar indicators of air thunderstorm. Storms just been severe well, This is probably one of the biggest frontiers left in, you know, meteorology. For Tim Samaras, his son Paul. It's actually Cherry County. And their partner Carl Young. The objective wasn't just to see a tornado. We're trying to understand why some thunderstorms create tornadoes and others don't. Their quest was to get critical information from these storms to help keep us safe in the future. I believe I'm the only guy that's been able to collect these measurements uh, routinely every year. From cornfields to Major League Baseball fields, they had no limit to where or how far they would go. What we're doing here is really dangerous, but believe it or not, the most dangerous part is all the driving. That's number one. Number two, lightning scares, scares the heck out of me. And then somewhere on the bottom, you know, it's the tornado. Tim was not simply a storm chaser. He was a scientist, a scientist with a cause. While he knew what he did was dangerous, he recently told 7 News when we rode along with him for a chase that he wanted to help predict these storms better and find ways to keep people safer. It was a challenge Tim and his crew faced with determination. What I'm trying to do is to help understand how strong the wind field is near the ground of a tornado. And we hand that information off the structure engineer. If the house doesn't fall apart, people are taking refuge on the inside of the home, you might have saved their lives. I spoke today with Tim's wife, Kathy, who released this statement saying Tim's priority was to warn people of these storms and save lives. Paul was a wonderful son and brother who loved being out with his dad. They made a very special team. 7 News reporter Jacqueline Allen also speaking to friends and family. Jacqueline, they're just stunned by today's news. Absolutely. This is Tim Samaras' last tweet. It was the pictures of storm clouds over Oklahoma, and he says, stay weather savvy. For those who loved him, they're remembering he always put safety and science first, but he still succumbed to Mother Nature's fury. RFD has wrapped 360 degrees around it. While others ran away, An amazing sight. Tim Samaras ran towards. It's just totally unbelievable what's happened because it should never have happened to Tim. Longtime friend and fellow storm chaser Karen Hill says the tornado Samaras and team chased Friday suddenly changed direction. This is a big hole in the storm chasing community. He's going to be missed forever. We might turn on CR2. Samaras and Carl Young became stars through Discovery Channel's Storm Chasers series. I hope we have some visibility here. But his career spanned decades of danger. He did it to save lives. His brother Jim says safety and science were Samaras' top concerns. Probe is off. But every day he chased, in spite of his experience, his family knew the inherent risks. A life lived in the storm would never be safe. His wife Kathy, all of his kids, my parents, 
understood the real reason why he was doing it. At the end of the day, he still got caught up himself. So public, please don't go out there and just try to chase tornadoes. It is unbelievably dangerous and it will kill you just like it did my brother. Powerful words and here on his Facebook page, you can see tornadoes, people outpouring support here, talking about times they've chased with him. They say he started out decades ago for the thrill seeking, for the video, but he stayed for the science and the technology he helped, he helped develop. Several people tell me he and his team would often stay and they would help with the cleanup for people devastated by these storms. Reporting live, Jacqueline Allen, 7 News.